Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Yes. Have you thought about um, what this quote means to you in your last, uh, what, decade and a half in L.A.? Do what you love and you'll never have to go to work. Or you'll um, never really fully work. It's mostly true. It's mostly, it's about 98% true. But you know, after you do 120 uh, movies, there are some that, uh, there's some days when it is work. But for the most part, if you do what you love, you won't have to go to work. Why have you chosen acting as a profession? I didn't choose acting. Uh, I, it, I think like most actors, um, you won't find any actors that have a sterling childhood to talk about think so you know mine I was uh, I was the fat kid the ugly kid the sissy kid uh, the smart kid with you know I made straight A's I couldn't throw a football I had bad acne I knew all the answers in Sunday school and I was really huge so um, the only the only way that you can when you're in that situation you can either fight back or you can find a way to deflect and so I just use entertainment for deflection I think I, I've never met an actor who I thought was any good who said well yeah my childhood was really great you know so um, I think just as a defense mechanism I chose uh, acting I could also have been a minister did you ever catch yourself fighting back and, and at what point did you turn it around and say let me use this as something oh yes absolutely yeah I remember vividly I, my my acne was so horrible that I would have uh, I remember a kid came in and said uh, can't you do something about your face and you know, only years and years later did I think of the snappy comeback. No, but I could do something about yours, you know. But you're never <laughs> badass when you need it. Um, I do remember it was shortly after that that um, I started doing imitations of our teachers and principals, and I didn't care if I got sent to the office as long as the kids would stop picking on me and they thought I was cool. Uh, and so the first time that they came up to me and didn't shove me into the locker, but instead said, "Hey, do that imitation of Mr. Rice you do." Yeah, do that thing. So I was their little performing monkey, but at least they weren't hitting me. Right. So that's been the whole thing is just, uh, the only reason I've ever done this is to say, please don't hit me. But if you entertain people, generally they won't hit you. Right. So it's good. So in 2013, we uh, met you at your church. I think it was at First Presbyterian in Hollywood. Yes. Beautiful church, absolutely gorgeous. And we'd done another interview with you prior to that. And when we turned off the cameras, I think you'd talked about how maybe you weren't sure about continuing with acting. Is this okay to talk about? Yeah, it is okay to talk okay, about. Okay, because we, we can stop if you want. No, 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 okay. it's good, yeah. Um, so 2013, let's see, my math is right. Three years, okay, yeah, it's good. Uh, what are your thoughts now? Because we're, we're on a movie set, by the way, for, for the people watching this, in Altadena, absolutely gorgeous place. It's at night. It's getting close to 11.30 p.m. and we've just watched you perform. It's a fascinating scene. I won't give too much away. I don't know if it's toward the end, but it's really cool. I wish people could see how neat it was up here and to watch your performance. We just kind of saw it from the side and you were in a very enviable position. I was watching them put this blood on you and it was just cool. But 2013, you said, maybe this isn't for you? Camera acting is funny because at some point you have to become a product or you're not able to succeed, right? So in the beginning, you do as much as you can just because you love it and you want to become established, in this case, become established in L.A. But at some point, if you're going to have any value to these productions, the only reason they're going to hire you at above scale, if they're not hiring you at above scale, there's no point in it unless you're rich, <laughs> the only way you're gonna get above scale is to become a product and a commodity. And that's the point at which y you have to find ways to reignite your passion because once you become that commodity, um, you lose a little bit of the love for the craft and the passion for the craft. It's so easy to let it slip away and not realize it. And the worst thing is a sense of entitlement. When you're the person that they bring in for two or three days, and then they put your name above the title or very high up. Uh, you're the sizzle. And they brought you in to do the wraparound story or whatever it is. You're adding value to the project. It's so easy to, f to feel, yeah, I'm, I'm entitled to that. And you're not. 
you're not, you know? So you forget how to be a part of the team. And I've been guilty of that uh, more than once, so I, I have to work on it. Bill, you attended an event recently where you got to be on the red carpet, which is something that so many actors, producers, screenwriters all, you know, want. Maybe that's not the end result for them. But can you talk about that experience? Uh, red carpets are a mind trip and you're not prepared for them until you do them. Now, the first few that you do, they're great because for the first time in your LA career, you're on the list. And you come up and they're, oh yes, of course, you know, yes, of course you're right there, right this way. Where here's a gift bag. We're so glad that you're here. And then something really insidious happens. As you do more and more, you notice that there are lists you're not on. And you start to want to be on those lists. And so then you're no longer happy with the list that you're on. I'll wait till they're gone. But the more that you do, you begin to realize there's a hierarchy. And then something insidious happens because you're on some list, but you're not on other lists. And you start to resent the list that you're not on. The other thing that happens is a disassociation with why you wanted to do this in the first place. Because you get a sense of importance, and the sense of importance comes from the little bit of celebrity that you have, and from people treating you as if you are something that you know you're not. And, and I, I think that this is one of the root causes for um, addictive behaviors that actors have. It really plays with your mind when people begin to treat you as if you're something special when, and this actually happened to me, when you have just passed, somebody sleeping on a piece of cardboard on the street 20 feet away from where you're standing on a piece of industrial carpet that's called the red carpet. And you're hearing people say, one more, Bill, look this way. One more over here. And you've completely forgotten about that guy. You never even thought about him. But if there was a camera there, you might use him as a prop. Now you think you would never become that person. But I remember that specific event when that happened. And there's a piece of video online of me and someone else on the red carpet to remind me forever that it happened. And I also remember the first time I went to a red carpet and I was not on the list, how pissed I was and how entitled I felt. And I almost said the words, don't you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know that red carpet culture is a good thing at all for an actor. Um, I, th I think it really helps to break down your craft. But when you walked away from the event where the gentleman was sleeping on the cardboard, um, what happened to you in the following weeks? Shortly after that particular red carpet, I got a call from a producer who said, we really, really want to use you in this movie. It was a sequel. But you've got to become more famous than you are. Can you get more famous? We actually had that conversation. And then you, you get hungry. You get hungry for more success, more red carpets, more lists that you can be on, to be famous enough to be in that guy's movie as opposed to the 55 other movies that you've already got booked coming up. You want to be in the one that you don't have. How can I get more famous? And then I saw the video online of me looking extremely uncomfortable doing this red carpet dance. Well, I know that there was somebody sleeping on a piece of cardboard 20 feet away. And I just about quit. It just about made me quit because I thought I can't do this anymore. I'm not a good celebrity. What I wanted to do with all of my tricks uh, and all of my magic online was to become a steady working actor in LA. And I did that. I became a very successful, for, for me, <laughs> working class actor in Los Angeles. But what I did not count on was that there is an additional element over which you have no control, and that is 
how famous you are. You can't control it, but everybody wants you to be more famous so you can bring more money to their project. And if you get caught up in that and thinking, I need to be more than I am, you just become an ungrateful bitch. And you start not to like yourself. And it's such a cliche. It's such an actor's cliche. But people who come to this city to work need to know that if they achieve success, they're going to have to decide how big a celebrity do I want to be. Do I want to say the level I've achieved is not enough? I've got to be big enough to be in that guy's movie and be on that series. And are they able to do it? And for me, no. I, I don't think I want to be any bigger because I don't want to be any more disassociated from the world than I already feel. So what that little tiny bit of celebrity that I've had, that little bit of experience, what it did for me was it made me say, if you want to preserve any craft that you have, if you want to preserve any shred of the reason that you became an actor in the first place, you've got to step away. And so I started doing theater more and I started touring with um, a Ray Bradbury piece that means something to my heart. And I started worrying not so much about being important. Um, and I've gone back east much more to be with my family in my little beach house there. And it's been very good for my soul. Um, and the more I think about it, the more I think that I don't really want to be a movie star because I don't have what it takes to stand on that red carpet and not go to the guy who's sleeping on the piece of cardboard and say, you know what, man? You should be on this red carpet. Somebody takes some of this food that costs so many thousands of dollars and feed these people that are right here at our feet. But you see, that's not a part of celebrity. That's not what we do in this business. That's not what we're about. We're about ourselves. And my God, I'm self-absorbed enough as it is. I, I can't do that anymore. So, yeah, so I'll never be a movie star, um, but I hope I can, you know, be a better person than that person was. Bill, we've had a few people reach out to us and say that they watched your video on, you know, sort of what it takes to be an actor moving to L.A. and that that video was part of the catalyst that got them here. Um, you feel any kind of responsibility, any kind of joy in knowing that you inspired people enough to leave their family and friends and the safety of where they grew up, maybe, I, maybe not, and come I out do, here? I do feel a responsibility because of the Film Courage videos because I have heard from people and I actually met a guy on the street. I was at an event in front of the Egyptian. He said, hey, you're that guy. I came to LA after I watched your video. Wow. And you, you really did, but I told you not to come. I said, <laughs> don't do this. And you did it, you did it anyway. Yes, it's, it's, it's great. And people were right in the last advice. And I'll say, look, I don't know anything. We only know what works for us in this business. We don't really know. Nobody really knows anything. But yeah, I'm happy to tell you what little I do know. Right, so then going back to the red carpet event, the one where you weren't on the list, where you caught yourself in a moment where you said, My battery's it? dead, baby. <laughs> where you caught yourself in a moment saying, I don't like that I'm not on this list, and then in the same moment, I don't like myself for not liking the fact that I'm on this list. In some instance, I mean, don't you think that that was almost needed? Because then look, something new came out of it, and that is you decided, if I'm going to do this, it's going to be for roles that I really feel a strong connection to, not something where they want to see the monkey dance with more numbers. Yeah, not being on the list uh, and being turned away in front of people that you know um, is a good thing. It's a good thing because the way that you react to it will show you how addicted you are becoming to celebrity. 
And when that happened to me, and I was supposed to be on the list, and there were people there with me who were on the list, and I was really embarrassed, and I was very pissed, and I'm ashamed to say that I took it out on the person who had the list, who had nothing to do with it, with who was on the list or wasn't. But it really made me think. It really made me think because I was outside that event looking in at all of the people. But I was in the same world, you know? The birds sing on my side too. <laughs> but you forget all of that when you're not on the list. When you think of your life as um, an actor and the perfect life as being an actor, I should say, what would that look like to you? Um, the perfect life of an actor is to be able to make a living at their craft and nothing more than that. To be able to, to do what we do and to sustain ourselves. And I don't know how it happened, but somehow acting got associated with fame and with celebrity. Because if you say you're an actor, then people will say, are you famous? Do I know you? And their eyes glint. Could you be a celebrity? Could they get close to a celebrity? And when you say, well, you know, I've done a few, and then they'll ask, well, what have you done that I might know? And if you name a couple of your movies and they don't know them, then you see their face fall. Oh. Um, so I don't think it's a good thing to think I'm going to come to Los Angeles and I'm going to be a star. I know that's the dream. It's hard enough to say I'm going to come to Los Angeles and I'm going to be a consistently working actor. That's a hell of a hard thing to do just by itself. Um, yeah, I, I think it's enough for an actor to be a steady working actor who gets to practice their craft in theater and in film and in television, all these different mediums that I've been fortunate enough to work in. If you had come to L.A. at 18, mm. how do you envision your life, your career being different? If I had come to L.A. when I was 18, I would have been dead because I would love this celebrity culture so much that I would do anything, anything to be on the bigger list, to be, I can feel it in my soul and I know I would have sold my very soul to be that big a celebrity, to be A-list. Yeah, so I'm really, really glad that I didn't come when I was 18 because no matter how protected you think you are, insulated and grounded you think you are, once you stand up on the red carpet and once people uh, are, are stopping you on the street and once people are saying, yes, of course, right this way, here's your car. You know, you come off the airplane and here's the person with, the, that stuff starts to build up in you and you start to feel, I deserve that. And uh, so it's really, really good to have the kick in your pants of not being on the list or thinking you're gonna get the pilot, but you don't get it because somebody more famous was hired. Those are good things because they, they make you reach the crossroads. And the question is, how famous do I wanna be? And what will I sacrifice to get there? And for me, I would have told you before I came to LA, I wanna be very famous and I'd sacrifice anything, but it's not true. It's not true. It's not worth my family. Fame is not worth my relationships. Fame is not worth my relationship with God. Fame is not worth my heart, the heart of an actor, which has to stay open. I can't close it off. So I'm happy with my little tiny level of celebrity. I do my theater, I do my films like this one. And uh, you know, if something big ever happens, that's great. That's great. But I'm not seeking it. I'm not seeking it anymore. Um, and if I never do another red carpet, you know, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's okay. So you went back home for a while after the, we'll call it the inciting incident, which was one of the two red carpet things. Yeah. And um, you contemplated giving up acting. Yeah. So how much time did you kind of give yourself and then what conclusion did you come up with? I know you said you really want to do theater and you are. I think you're doing something in Pasadena coming up. Um, but what, what was the process like? I got into a funk for about four months after um, 
you know, this constant drone of uh, you're a little bit famous, but you need to be more famous. And what can we do to get you more famous? And maybe we could, uh, you know, I had discussions with publicists. Well, maybe we could do a scandal or, you know, what can we do? What can we do that's going to go viral? What can we do that's going to go viral? And yeah, I got in a bad funk for about three months and um, I just went back east and walked on the beach and, you know, didn't want to talk to anybody. And um, being around real people is very good. So if you're an LA actor, it's a really good thing. I know you, we don't want to leave LA because you, if you leave, you feel like you're missing something. Mm -hmm. You're not missing anything. Take a break, go back, pet dogs, be with real people whose life doesn't revolve around being on the list. And then you can get some sense of what it is you want to do. And what the sense that I got after taking that time was that I don't want or need to be a star or a celebrity. I love what I do for a living and I love it with a passion. And I want to do it and I'll do whatever publicity is necessary to promote my projects. I love doing that publicity about things I care about, but I'm not going to say, hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. Hey, look at me, and then be pissed because that person's not looking at me, although all these other people are. I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't want to be important anymore. I have to wake up every day and look in the mirror and say, it's okay if you're not important. It's okay if you're not a star. It's okay if people don't know who you are. You're an actor. You're an actor. And that's enough.